I want to share with you my worst dating experience ever. So if you don't know me, my name is Denise Kavaleskis and I am a woman's transformational love coach specializing in helping women go from toxic love to true love. And today in this video, I want to share with you my worst dating experience. Um, I've noticed recently that I don't really talk too much about dating stories. Um, I think I have two videos on YouTube here. Um, one is how to spot a narcissist when dating or in dating. And the other one is, um, oh gosh, what's the other one? Oh, how to date after a narcissistic relationship. So it's Sunday morning, actually Sunday afternoon, and I'm outside in beautiful North Carolina at my house. And just out here in nature, enjoying nature underneath this big tree that I often meditate under, um, share my gratitude with. And I was just thinking, and you came across my mind, and maybe what you need is more dating stories, more of me sharing how to date after a narcissistic relationship. Now that you're on your healing journey, what to look for, all the things dating, right? After what you've been through. So my worst dating story, and I have, I'm going to do another one that's like my almost worst because I have a few, but the one that really sticks out in my mind is the one where it was like the universe had slapped me up across the face and was like, Denise, wake up. Um, and so I do mention him in my book, Empower the Woman Within, but I just want to give you like this one piece, this one portion. So it was, um, I don't know, it was 2012, 13, I don't know, it doesn't matter, but I was, um, I didn't find him attractive, like physically attractive at all. But I was listening to my friends who were like, um, as long as he treats you good, that's all that matters. And I'm thinking, well, I think a job matters. Like, I think, you know, there's other things that matter. But who was I to judge? I had just gotten out of a 22-year toxic relationship. I hadn't dated. You know, I was in my 40s. I hadn't dated um before in my teens, like that's the last time I dated. I didn't know. I didn't know. Anyway, so I was giving him a chance and, um, it came across this one time. So we had been dating for, I don't know, maybe two months, somewhere around there. Um, and it was, I went to Colorado and he was being super needy he wanted all of my attention. I remember him love bombing me, you know, almost immediately with saying, I love you. You know, he was insisting that we say, I love you to each other. Remember love bombing is too much too soon. And me really feeling uncomfortable to say that because I didn't love him. And it was like forcing it out of me. And I said it. Ugh. And, um, so in Colorado, he again wanted all my attention and I was like, Hey, I'm here at my friends. Like I really want to enjoy myself. I was only there for like three days, I think. Um, and he was just pretty needy being really persistent in wanting the attention. So what I did was, is I was like, you know what? I had enough of this. Like I can't even handle you anymore. And I was like, forget it. Like I just want to break up and, or stop seeing or whatever you call it. <laughs> I get home here to North Carolina and he's contacted my friends, my family here, um, sharing a boohoo story of how I broke up with him over what he's confused. He doesn't understand. He also, um, who, who else did he contact? Oh, he had his contact, his kids contact me. Really? I met his kids like once 
maybe twice. Um, and then the, one of the big kickers was he went to my friend's house and, um, family, they're like family friends and brought them all. Hold on. Something was biting me or whatever. And brought them their, all, all of them, their favorite liquor and didn't bring my liquor. Like, uh, I don't want your liquor, but uh, why are you bringing my friends their favorite liquor? Like we broke up. So, okay. So that was, that was kind of, you know, eye opening, but the biggest thing that was an eye opener was him emailing me, um, as if it was his sister, Mandy telling me in an email that he, so he's, he's acting like his sister. So I get an email from initially who I think is Mandy, his sister, but in reality it's him. But I don't know this at the time. So the email says something along the lines of Jay had overdosed on pills or something. They found him on the side of the road. He's in the hospital. He's devastated basically because of me. Also, basically, I wish I would have kept these emails. I tried to find them the other day. Um, also, he, um, he said in the email... Mandy said in the email that blaming me, it was my fault, right? Because, you know, that's what narcissistic people do. They blame. So anyway, I instantly knew that this was not the truth. This wasn't him. So I started to ask questions like any other normal person would ask. Okay, well, if this is true, what hospital is he in, right? Vague answer, if an answer at all. So then my, my gut feeling of this is BS was getting stronger and stronger. Well, my best friend was very, um, tied up into this emotionally and she was like, no, maybe he's telling the truth. So the whole day I entertained it basically with back and forth emails. Long story short, um, what I realized, what the biggest message for me in this, this story that I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you is that it was almost the same exact scenario as what I had experienced in Florida with my ex-husband, overdosing, attempted suicide, things like that. So that's what really like, when I really realized like, wait a minute, Denise, these people don't know each other, but they do know you. That's when I realized I was the common denominator here and that all of this was showing up and I needed to, to find out why all of this was showing up because it was essentially for me, it was helping me and I needed to find out like, so this was obviously before my healing journey, before I realized like a lot of things about myself, as far as I was in an abusive relationship, I was an abused woman, um, and all the things that go with that. So this was the big I could have had a V8 slap upside the head from the universe saying, Denise, you need to really look at yourself and go inside, go within to figure this out. Because this dating is just going to keep showing you what lessons you need to learn from. So I took that and I listened and I stopped dating and I went within. I hired an empowerment coach. And I started my healing journey, which led me to my life now. Just got in, married last year to my best friend, my soulmate, living literally a life that some people would think is a dream. I mean, look at this. And having an amazing husband who's supportive and loving and patient and kind Ooh, thank you. Just going to take that in for a second. (sighs) Beautiful. Thank you. 
So here's my message to you. If you're seeing a pattern in your dating experience where you're attracting on a emotionally unavailable men or you're attracting toxic men, you're attracting angry men, you're t- um, attracting men who are detached. If you're seeing a pattern in this, then I can help you. This is what I do. This is how I help women. They have the same cycles, patterns with relationships as I did. And I walk you through the same healing journey and process that I went through so that you can be on the other side of that and you too can marry your soulmate, your best friend, um, wherever you choose. Ours was North Carolina Beach. Um, This is my passion to help you get to the other side, not be stuck with guys like this, with dates like this, with experiences like this, where you're bashing your head upside the wall, trying to figure out like what the is happening because you're smart you're beautiful you're intelligent you're successful you you have a house like you like you're a good mom you're a good woman why right I get this from women all the time and this was me too why do I keep attracting I used to call them I don't know if I could say this on YouTube but douchebags Um, why do I keep attracting men like this Um, and, and the other thing is, is like, we're not 20 anymore. I know for me, I was in my forties and I was like, I don't want to be single for the rest of my life. Um, I don't want to be partying because I went through my phase of partying every weekend, you know, being hungover, uh, my weekend started on Thursday night, didn't end till Monday. You know, it's like that gets old, that gets boring. I wanted to settle down. I wanted to, you know, have somebody to travel with, have somebody to have dinner with, somebody who loves me, who cares about me, who supports me, and vice versa, of course, and travel with and experience life with. And I have all of that now with my husband, Ray. And that's what I want for you too. So what I'll do is I will leave an application to a Heal Your Heart session with me down below. And you can um, just click on it. It's like five questions. Um, And then I will be in touch with you to set up and schedule a Heal Your Heart session with me so that you too can go from toxic love, true love. All right, my loves, have an amazing Sunday.